The ordinary day at Fair Share starts at about 7 o'clock in the morning when our first van arrives at a Woolworths store, um, picks up fruit and vegetables, moves on to the next store and the run continues. We've got uh, five runs um, across supermarkets uh, across Melbourne happening every day and they're sourcing meat and vegetables, fruit and eggs and bring it into the kitchen. I've always hated any uh, food waste. I grew up with the, in the generation where you just, you know, didn't waste food on your plate. And to see supermarkets getting rid of uh, food that other people could use, um, you know, to find a charity who are doing something with that and cooking up such vast quantities of, of great food, I felt like I had to try and ask them if I could come and work for them. Fisher started 10 years ago when a group of people had a vision for using food that would otherwise go to waste and give it out to charities that were helping people in need. Um, it was actually two groups of people. One group was working, going around to events and picking up food at the end of the night. And another group was approaching businesses and getting food, bringing it into the RACV club in the city, cooking pies on a Saturday morning and giving it out to charities. Both groups though were providing food to, to charities that were helping people in need. Um, 10 years on, uh, the same concepts there. We're rescuing food, we're helping charities provide food to people in need. Um, I guess it's just on steroids now. We've got, uh, each day we're collecting around 3,000 kilos of food from fruit and vegetables through to uh, pasta and rice. Really good quality food that would otherwise go to landfill. Um, we now have three shifts a day running in the kitchen. We have uh, 40 volunteers coming in and helping over the, those shifts and they're cooking around 2,000 meals that are going out to around 200 charities right across Victoria. One of the organisations that we uh, get donations from is called Fair Share. And they're organisations that are given food from other businesses and, uh, and then they disperse it to organisations like us. So we're privileged to be on the receiving end of some of those donations, which means that we can provide the meals that we do. Right, we're at the Northern Community uh, Church of Christ Ministry Centre, which is in uh, Preston, and we have a community lunch uh, today, Tuesday, plus Wednesdays and Thursdays, and people are free to uh, come in from the general community to, uh, to have lunch. But we would never survive without uh, the support of places like Fair Share, so the expansion of uh, organisations like that would be uh, important for our kind of continued development. We have pretty smart technology that allows us to monitor real time what food's in what van so that the kitchen can plan ahead what's coming in, uh, what's been rescued that day and, and what they're going to cook um, in shifts that afternoon, that evening and uh, the following day. What we're finding is that we've got uh, five vehicles out on the road, therefore we weren't from a kitchen perspective, they don't know what's coming in each day. So a volunteer IT support person, John Wilson, came up with the idea that we'd build an uh, online system. Uh, we provide the drivers with, a, with an iPad, and in that iPad, we have our pickups and our collections. So essentially, we can give the iPad to a volunteer driver or a paid driver. It's got the maps, it's got the contacts, and we can also do an online tracking of what food is coming inbound so the kitchen can work out what they're gonna cook each day and also from that perspective, what we're gonna donate. Uh, and it also gives us a much, much more accurate uh, data of what's coming through. So we can we know that the South East Run has given us 400 or 450 kilos of produce and we've got no meat. So then we know roughly where we're going each day to move on to the agencies. One of the magic things about Fair Share is the range of people who give up their time. Uh, we've got people who come and volunteer in the kitchen every week, uh, but you've got small businesses that are uh, writers or graphic designers or electricians or plumbers, and uh, they come together around this concept of rescuing food and helping people in need, giving where they can with their time, with their expertise, and I guess that's the real magic to Fair Share. Yeah. Tonight is a night for love and food. Now there is a certain difference between men and women, we know this. The women is going to be capable of doing all the chopping and the peeling and the mincing and all the other stuff, while the blokes don't know which way to look. That's normal. 
the women are saying, oh, this is easy. We've got only got to do this, that, and the other thing and fold that, and then we do that. So blocks, don't worry about your focus being, not knowing whether you should be looking at that or looking at that. <laughs> Just ask the girl that you most fancy to show you what to do. I'm here because fair share is a great cause. A lot of great people involved with it. I volunteer on a once a week basis in the kitchens, um, helping to prepare and cook rescued food. I've met a lot of great friends doing it over the last six months and it just makes for a really happy, fun time in the kitchen, chopping away and making all sorts of things. Well, we volunteer probably fortnightly on a Thursday night. There's a team of us and we um, go through and cook sausage rolls and pasties, chop up vegetables and prepare quiches and prepared meals. I guess I feel a bit fortunate with what I do and uh, look to give something back to the community. I work for um, Amcor Fibre Packaging, um, so yeah, work there full time. It varies between 8 and about 12 in our group, um, and at all, it started, everyone's got a different story how they got there, but we're all there and everyone comes from, from retirees to people our age to uni students, so it's a, quite a diverse group, and we all get together and uh, go through it all on a Thursday night. It's very hands-on, there's no commitments after, you know, you come in, you do your shift and you can go home and you don't have to worry about writing letters or looking after members or, it, it's, um, and it's good fun, it's a good social thing. Lots of ages, lots of people from different um, areas. So I'm a little bit task oriented and I just like being a part of a team. Uh, it all works very dynamically, very well. Yeah, it feels good to have uh, potentially helped uh, someone in need. I was drawn to fair share from an environmental perspective. I knew about the amount of water that goes into growing food, um, land that's cleared, uh, the amount of fuel that it takes to bring food to market. And when I learnt about the amount of food that was being wasted, I thought about the resources that were just being thrown out, were, were being wasted as well. Um, I've loved cooking, I've always been a keen cook and so uh, I guess for me it's been a fusion of um, the environmental as well as the cooking and whilst I've been involved with Fair Share I've learnt more about people going um, hungry in our society. A lot of people when they think of hunger and malnutrition think about developing nations, um, they don't think about Australia and for me it's been um, a real uh, education a real eye-opener in learning about the number of people who are going hungry in Melbourne and why they're going hungry. Well, we find ourselves at the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre where we are the largest provider of aid and other services to asylum seekers in the whole country. We've got about a thousand members at any given time and 75 percent of the members who come to our food bank have no uh, right to work in Australia and they receive no form of welfare. They have no income and they're completely destitute. We've got a small budget with which we're able to purchase uh, quite a lot of things in bulk but where we really struggle is fruit and veg. I should say we would struggle were it not for the support of Fair Share. Fair Share brings in uh, a couple of times a week 100, 200 kilos of fresh fruit and veg, very good quality. They do that work uh, with some other organisations in the community and they really make the difference for us between being able to provide a beautiful, colourful, varied, five food groups, yummy, let's go home and cook kind of a hamper versus a sort of dull, drab, here's your basics, here's your grains and uh, you know that's the best we could do for you this week. Fish is able to do so much with volunteers and businesses that, um, that help us out but at the end of the day it does take some money and a fair bit of my time spent uh, going out and rattling the can and trying to get philanthropic organisations and individuals and companies to uh, um, support us financially. Uh, I guess it's, uh, it's a pretty appealing concept and when we're able to go out there and say that a thousand dollars um, is enough money to help us rescue enough food to cook 2,000 meals and give them out for free. Um, it, it, it resonates with people.